Let's talk about Kodak stock. What in the world is happening? My name is Mike Bernard. I am the host of the Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Welcome to this channel. If you are new, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, well, today is Friday. That's when I'm recording this. I don't know when you're watching it. I expected to turn on my phone this morning and hear that there was a stimulus deal passed overnight. Apparently, the negotiations did not end well. I'm still confident we're going to have a deal. I, I could be wrong, but uh, there is a popularity contest happening later this year, and uh, neither will be really popular if there's no deal made. So anyway, let's talk about Kodak stock. Now, we haven't talked about it yet, but this is unbelievable what's happening. Yes, Kodak the company that used to be the photo maker, right? They've remade themselves Eastman Kodak. And back in, oh, let's say 2013, their stock was trading, let's say around $25, $30 a share. And it's been straight steadily down from there to around $2.75 until a week ago. And the stock, I'm not, I, I won't tell you the narrative just yet, but the stock jumps from, you know, it has been this level $2.60, $2.80, $2.75 for the past several years with very little volume. And it shoots up in one day to $47 a share. Right now, it stands around $16 a share. That's a ton of volatility. What happened? Let's go back a couple of months. When the, uh, when the coronavirus first came on the scene, not on the scene in the U.S., but on the scene in our, in, in our awareness, uh, the thought was, well, it's going to spread all across China. We're safe. It's going to spread all across China. And that's going to mean huge problems for businesses that, um, that import from or have goods made over in China. One of, the, one of the most alarming um, thoughts back then was, well, we get a lot of our generic drugs over in China. We are not in a good position if they lock down and we're not able to get some of these goods, but especially these pharmaceuticals, then we're in serious trouble. And so the current administration, Obviously, that that you know the, the the coronavirus absolutely exploded. We're now in a pandemic, of course, but we've seen supply chain issues, but we haven't seen this crunch of pharmaceuticals, at least not not that I've seen, where people aren't aren't able to get access to the medicines that they need. Still, the uh, the the this administration, Congress has created a program to try to have more pharmaceuticals created here in the U.S. So we're less susceptible to big supply chain issues like this in the future. And so they were gonna create a grant, they were gonna create a loan, an emergency loan, and companies would have to um, apply for it and then they'd be able to use the money to help manufacture pharmaceuticals here in the US. And in a surprising turn of events, you could almost say suspicious turn of events, normal pharmaceutical companies did not get the very first loan under this new program. Who did? None other than former photography company Kodak. Kodak has never done pharmaceuticals. Now they say we've been in the chemical business, we've been, you know, chemicals are needed to develop photos and we've got, of course, all sorts of history in that, but they're not a pharmaceutical company. And so they were surprisingly the first uh, company awarded with this money, with this loan, and their stock skyrocketed as people jumped all over that news. It created a lot of buzz and got a lot of day traders starting to speculate on where that was going to go. And now, as I said, the stock price has slowly come back down, but it's still at $16 a share compared to $2.70. Apparently, there is obvious scrutiny under the entire process of Kodak getting this bid, getting this loan. And uh, I don't, you know, I have no idea how this is gonna play out. I'm scratching my head as to how in the world Kodak would have received this first, the very first loan under this new program. You wouldn't have given it to another company that has actually had pharmaceutical experience in the past. I, it seems fishy to me. 
and we'll see what the process, you know, uh, innocent until proven guilty, we'll see what the process uh, reveals. Uh, what's it mean for you investors? Um, a, a couple of things. Number one, it, ta it, it reveals the risk of speculating the risk of speculating. No one was jumping into Kodak stock back when it was sitting at $2.60, $2.70, $2.80 for years. No one was jumping in trying to gamble. And then as soon as we get a whiff of a potential loan and a new industry, the stock skyrockets and then all sorts of volatility. You gotta watch out for rampant speculation. And I would encourage you, unless you're a day trader, and if you are, you're not listening to this channel, I would encourage you, don't try to jump in on that buzz. You hear Kodak has skyrocketed over a thousand percent. Don't jump in there. That, that, that's, that's a dangerous place. That's, that's speculation, that's gambling. You should be an investor, not a, not a gambler. Um, the second thing that I would tell you is this continues to reveal we've got an upside down economy happening right now. And there, if, if we laid out a list of all the peculiar things that are happening right now in the economy, that, that list would be very long and distinguished, right? Um, but this is another sign of it. Why? A company that has no experience in a certain, in a, in a certain field gets a loan, gets debt to pursue the, do you know, creating some 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 drugs, some pharmaceuticals, and the company skyrockets over a thousand percent in return. That doesn't make any sense. When does getting a loan actually make your company more valuable? Now you could say getting a loan is leverage for them to to produce it, but there there's no there's no history of them being able to produce this type of good and have it be and have and do so in a profitable way. And so this again reveals right now, we are in a very, very confusing time in our economy and overall stock market. Up is down, left is right, all sorts of things aren't making sense. And so how, is this, how do you apply this to yourself? Once again, stay clear of speculation. Stay clear of speculation. Be a long-term investor. Make sure any money you need in the short term is in short-term instruments. Yeah, I know, they don't pay much. They don't pay a lot of yield. We're gonna talk next week about finding ways to get yield in this environment. But your short-term dollars should be in the short term. Your medium-term dollar, term dollars should be low risk, medium risk, and then your long-term dollars, those are the dollars that are still invested, still invested in a diversified mix where you're not trying to guess what comes next, but then you complement that with a momentum strategy that is not trying to guess what comes next, but is reading what's happening in real time and positioning the dollars. That's how you invest, not in rampant speculation with Kodak. I, my, my guess is um, somehow Kodak makes its way through this, um, but this is, what a bizarre chain of events insulate yourself from that sort of speculation. All right, reach out to your CFP as always to make sure you've got the right approach to your overall financial life, all six areas. Reach out to your CFP. You don't have one, you can contact one on our team. You can find us online, corehorn.com, that's corehorn with a K, or you can send us an email, info at corehorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.